Well, how is everyone doing today? Good. <clears throat> uh, it wasn't announced there. For the offering this Sunday and then again for next Sunday, we're doing a special offering for Shane and Velda. They are needing to collect some money to go towards some costs that they've incurred while they're away. Uh, for and Neil, what are these? Right, so it's for immigration papers and for some language classes that they are needing. And so we're looking to, uh, to be able to put some funds towards them. So uh, whether this Sunday or next Sunday, if that's on your heart to help out uh, Shane and Velda, they're away in Romania doing mission work there and just doing a phenomenal job uh, representing uh, you guys, the church, and representing God there in Romania. So just keep them in your prayer and uh, we'll be doing an offering this Sunday and again next Sunday. So I know we haven't really seen each other, it seems, in forever. You, you lose one Sunday and all of a sudden it seems that you're, it's where, where's the time gone? And uh, so I, I know for myself and Katrina, we're just super thrilled to be here. We're truly called uh, to Montague. We, we are really enjoying the time here. We're going to be situated here in the next few weeks. So it's right around the corner and we'll be living here and it'll be great to be a few minutes from the church instead of an hour and a few minutes from the church. But uh, two weeks ago, we welcomed in the new year. We talked about some New Year's resolutions for those who were here, and we talked about being resolved in a few areas. Our goal this year is to be resolved, to be simple, sensible, and specific this year in what we do. And what we're going to do this year, we're going to focus on the red letters in the Bible. We're going to focus on Jesus' words through this 2017 year. That's going to keep us simple, sensible, and specific. So as we go through these, we've come up with a reading schedule. If you didn't get the reading schedule, back at the welcome table there's a reading schedule and that's going to take us through the book of Matthew between now and Easter. So this year we're going to make it through the Gospels together as a community and so between now and Easter we're going to make it through Matthew. We've gone through a couple chapters a week, so if you haven't gotten through that yet, we've gone through things like uh, Jesus' genealogy, his birth, baptism, and the calling of his disciples. That brought us to this week going to the Sermon on the Mount. So grab that reading schedule if you don't have it. That way we can be together as we go through this. So this storm day makes it seem like forever. But if you weren't here, or if you were here, what we went through was we wanted to de be determined to learn from Jesus. We want to be determined to learn from Jesus. And the takeaway from two weeks ago, we started a three-week message, that's why I want to bring these up to speed. The takeaway was Jesus offers you and I rest because his yoke is easy and his burden is light. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. So let's go to God in prayer. God and Father, we come to you, we give you praise and thanks, God, and we ask a blessing on this time together, God, and on this time of fellowship and of worship, God, and we just ask that all things today bring honor and glory to you, God, and that the message this morning, God, is your words laying on the hearts of those, and we just ask, God, that People have open ears, open hearts, and open minds this morning to hear your message, to hear your message of love through your Son, Jesus. We bring this to you, God, in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Well, all right, what we've done, we've put the last two messages together today. That way we're on track for the year. So we have two messages combined in one. So if someone just wants to let me know when we're at 2 o'clock, that, no, I'm kidding. A few people probably would not be happy. So we're going to put these together, and what we want to look at is love. Simple word, love. We hear it all the time. And so I wanted to research some shows on love. And if you are familiar with any shows on love, maybe you know some of the ones that came up. I, I got some topics like The Bachelor, Bachelorette. Maybe you are familiar with some of these. Maybe you aren't, and that's a good thing. Uh, Love Island. These are the things that 
today's day and age think of when we think of love. And if you aren't familiar with these, these are shows, they call it a reality TV show, and maybe it's reality in 2017. It wasn't back in my time when I was getting married. They take, you know, let's say 12 ladies that are all interested in one guy. He dates all of them and then tries to decide which one. That's not reality, and I don't think that's love either. And that's what we tend to see as being love. And so I want to talk this morning on love. And that love isn't just a feeling, it's an action. For example, I love steak and potatoes. I'm an island boy, steak and potatoes. But I also love my wife and kids. And it's a different type of love. And if I had to get rid of one, it wouldn't be my wife and kids, it would be the steak and potatoes. So we have to know what love is and what it means. And to understand love, we want to look at how did Jesus love? How did he teach us to love? Paul wrote some things on love. 1 Corinthians 13, love is patient, love is kind. Love does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others, it's not self-seeking, it's not it is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. If you and I want to truly love, we need to know how did Jesus love. We need to be determined to love like Jesus. Because love is a verb. It's an action word. It's a thing we do. It's not a noun which is a feeling. Because feelings can go away. But love is an action word. Our text this morning, Matthew twenty-two thirty-four. Feel free to turn in your Bible, Matthew twenty-two thirty-four, 34, uh, to verse 40. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with a question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Jesus instructs us to love God and to love others. So we need to be people who are determined to love like Jesus. And we can do this when we love with our head. With our head. He said, with your heart, soul, and mind. We want to love with our mind. That word in the Greek Dianoa, it's like notion or thought. What are our thoughts? What are our notions? What does it mean to love with our head? What do we think about? What do you and I think about when we're alone? Do our thoughts show a genuine love for God and for others? Do our thoughts honor God? What are the things that you and I think about? Proverbs 23, 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. It's like the book by James Allen from the early 1900s. As a man thinketh. It talks about how thought is such a powerful thing. What we think about. It says that our thoughts will reveal us. So do we love people with how we think? We need to love people and be determined to love like Jesus, and we can also do this when we love with our heart. Now this word heart is a neat word. It's translated cardia, and we kind of get the word cardiac, cardiovascular. That, that comes from this Greek word of heart, cardia. So it's our inner life. It, our intentions, our desires. Do we desire to love 
God and love others. What are the things that you and I desire? Do we desire things that show we have a genuine love for God? Do we desire things that show we have a genuine love for others? Or do we desire things that show we have a genuine love for self? What are our desires? Are you and I more concerned with our hobbies or maybe our special interests? Maybe more concerned with the relationship? The relationship we need to be concerned with is our relationship with Christ. So do you and I desire to love God and love others? Jesus says, for the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. So what is your heart full of? What are those desires? If your mouth speaks what your heart is full of, are the words that come out of your mouth words that honor God? We'll love Jesus when we treat people with respect. When we serve people around us, when we pray for people. It'll show when our heart is a heart that truly loves God and loves others. If God is love, then when we show love, we show God to others. If, if God is love, then when we show love, we're going to show God to others. Our other text this morning is Luke nine twenty three. Jesus said, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Jesus requires you and I to follow him and live like him. We must take up our cross daily and follow him. That's what being a Christian means, is to be like Christ. We need to be people who are determined to live like Jesus, not just to love, but to live like Jesus. And we can do this when we use our hands. Do the things we do with our hands show that we're honoring God and honoring others? Jesus said, pick up your cross and follow me. That's a strong statement. And, and I know different times I hear it, and we kind of think of it just on the surface, pick up your cross and, and follow me. And, and maybe someone thinks that, well, I have a necklace with a gold cross on it, and I've picked that up and I've worn it to church, so maybe that's picking up my cross and following Jesus. Or other people, maybe it's, it's a, a hurt or an illness, or maybe it's challenges at, at work or in your family, and you feel that that's a burden, that's your cross, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bear this cross. What this means, pick up your cross and follow me, the cross means the same today as it did in Jesus' day. It meant death. The cross was a tool to die. So if we're going to pick up our cross, and we're going to follow Jesus, that means we need to die to self. We need to put all our selfish, selfish ambitions behind us. We need to die to self and follow Jesus. We need to take those selfish ambitions, whatever they might be, we need to take those and nail those on the cross. We need to die to self and follow Jesus. Jesus taught you and I to love, and that love is an action, not a feeling. He taught us that it is an action, not a feeling, to love others. And he showed us this first by loving us first. So if we're going to love and we're going to live like Jesus, we need to show love first, just like Jesus showed for us. We need to show that same love love of God to others as Jesus had shown to us. What are we doing for the community? What are we doing for our friends and family? What are we doing for a need? What are we doing for a mission uh, work like Shane and Velda? Are our hands showing we love God and love others? Jesus served. Luke 22, 
For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? It is not the one who is at the table, but I among you as the one who serves. Again, Mark 10. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. When our head is right and our heart is right, then our hands will be right. And we can love God and love others. And we can show that love. John 13, a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciple if you love one another. There's a story of there's a handful of salesmen and they're traveling, they were away all week and they're heading to the airport anxious to get home. It's a Friday, they haven't seen their families all week and it's a typical busy airport Friday and they're rushing through and all of a sudden one of the salesmen bumps into an apple cart stand. And the group of them keep going and the apples are gone everywhere and one of them stops and he looks back and he sees the young girl you know, kind of confused and looking to, to get and gather up these apples, and he has a decision to make. Do I continue? I told my wife I was going to be home tonight for supper, we'd have family night, or do I stop and do I help? The rest of the group all carried on to their gate, and this one guy stops. He goes back and he starts helping this young girl. And there's apples everywhere, and he's watching her fumbling and trying to pick up the apples, and there's busy people, traffic everywhere, and he realizes that this young girl's blind. And so she can't even find what she's looking for. And so he stops and he helps, and he picks up all the apples, and he helps her get the table all set up, and he's got a basket of the good apples and another basket with the kind of bruised and battered apples, and he put those aside, and he, he just he felt terrible, and he said to her, you know, like, I apologize, you know, here's some money to make up for the apples that were spilt, and uh, knowing full well that him staying back, he wasn't going to see his family that night, and he just, he did it anyways, and he said, you know, are you okay, is there anything else, and she said no, and, you know, he can still see that she's kind of in shock and still not sure what's on the go, as he's walking away, puts some money on the table, he's walking away, and she calls out, she said, hey, mister, mister, and he stopped, and he looks back, and you know, he can see that she can't see him at all. And she said, are you Jesus? And so the question I have for you is do you do things where someone would confuse you for Jesus? Does your daily life show that you're a follower of Jesus? Do you love others and love God? This year, this 2017, what we want to do is we want to resolve to learn from Jesus, to love like Jesus, and to live like Jesus. And by this, they will know that we're followers of him. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you and we just ask a blessing, God, on on the lives here of those that are with us, God, and we ask a blessing on those who couldn't be with us this morning, God, and we just, we lift those up to you. We lift up those who are ill or injured and those in the community who couldn't make it out this morning, God, and we just ask that your light shine through us in all that we do and that by the work that we do, they will know that we're followers of you, God, and they will see your love through us. God bless us all as we leave here today, and we ask all of this in your Son Jesus' name. Amen.